one of the most advanced express trains in Europe, the X2000 of Sweden, was developed in order to overcome the geographic obstacles of this largely mountainous nation, incorporating state-of-the-art tilting technology so as to allow for the fastest journeys between the various regional centers of the country, while also lending itself to the possibility of various export models that unfortunately failed to see widespread results. The story of the X2000 goes back to 1967, when the Swedish State Railways, or SJ, undertook a study as to potentially speeding up their network from its current maximum of 80 miles an hour to 125 miles an hour. This lack of competitive top speed made the railway system easy prey for domestic air travel and the rising car journeys, as demonstrated in that, during 1950, SJ's passenger arm accounted for 70% of Sweden's commuter market, while by 1995, this figure had collapsed to a mere 16% of the market. The main problems for SJ in developing faster trains was Sweden's primarily mountainous terrain, which precluded the ability to allow for long stretches of straight track that could be upgraded to 125 mile an hour running, while the construction of dedicated high-speed lines, as per the Shinkansen of Japan and later TGV of France, would be ruinously expensive to implement. In 1970, SJ observed the rapidly rising trend for tilting trains, as adopted by the nations of Spain, Canada and Great Britain, with two primary systems coming to the fore. Spain's Talgo and the UAC Turbotrain of Canada opted for a passive system that incorporated pendulums and dampers in order to tilt the carriages, but due to these being controlled solely by physics as the trains entered corners, could be easily knocked off balance at low speeds and thus leave carriages in a tilted position while stationary. Meanwhile, active systems utilized hydraulic arms and early computer controls to tilt the carriages into corners at the precise moment necessary in order to alleviate the effects of centrifugal force, as pioneered on the Advanced Passenger Train, or APT, that was being developed by British Rail during the early 1970s. Therefore, following an intensive study undertaken by SJ and Swedish engineering firm Azea, proposals were made in 1974 that a tilting train should be developed so as to alleviate the need for major infrastructural upgrades on the SJ network. For trials, a two-car Class X1 electric multiple unit, as built in 1967, was taken out of service and converted for use as the testbed upon which tilting train technology would be examined, this train being redesignated to Class X15 and was fitted with a compressed air tilting system and three different bogey types, including self-steering versions. However, the tilt mechanism, due to its size, required a large amount of space in order to operate, and occupied nearly half of the X-15 coach, though regardless, the prototype tilting train, once delivered in 1975, was able to set new records for Swedish railways during its first year of trials, achieving a top speed of 148 miles an hour while running between Stockholm and Gothenburg on the western main line. Following further tests conducted with the X-15, SJ was granted permission by the Swedish government in 1981 to acquire three prototype high-speed tilting trains as developed by various companies, including Azea, British Rail Engineering Limited, and Fiat Ferroviaria, though by 1983, none of these three companies had been able to develop an active tilt system that neatly met SJ's demands. This subsequently saw the withdrawal of the tender during the same year, and a revised specification issued another abortive round of tendering taking place during 1984 and 1985, before finally, in 1986, Azea was able to develop a tilting system that met SJ's stringent requirements. On August 27th of that year, the railway operator ordered 20 trains of the proposed X2 type, due for delivery in December 1989, making it the largest ever investment in new stock by the Swedish state railways. The first prototype coach, as built by Kalmar Verkstad, being delivered in 1987 and incorporated into the original X-15 test train for evaluation. The coach was tested over three winters in temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees and in summer up to 35 degrees, providing a substantial amount of information that was used to further develop the upcoming production sets. Finally, in December 1989, the first X-2 production set, number 2001, was delivered by Azea Brown Bavari, the recent merger of Azea and Swiss firm Brown Bavarian Company, and on December 17th undertook its first test run on the Western Main Line, where it covered the 283-mile journey between Stockholm and Gothenburg in 2 hours and 54 minutes, making for an average speed of 99 miles an hour. 
straight-line speed tests conducted outside Stockholm saw the set reach an outright top speed of 171 miles an hour, making it the fastest train ever to run on Swedish rails, though the introduction of the X2 was not a completely smooth affair due to a vast number of teething problems. So numerous were these concerns that SJ would not accept the first unit until seven months after its launch, by which time the company had chosen to christen its new train the X2000, in order to reflect that this would be the train for the year 2000, passenger services ultimately commencing from September 4, 1990, on the Western Main Line, with a running time of 3 hours and 35 minutes being initially scheduled for the Stockholm to Gothenburg run, due to only half the route having been resiggled for 125 mile an hour operation. Comprising five coaches and a power car, the X2000 sets included one first class trailer, two second class trailers, a bistro car, and a cab control car at the rear, the power car being capable of achieving 4,400 horsepower and operated using AC overhead wires that could be energized at 15 kilovolts for Sweden and Norway and 25 kilovolts for Denmark. In order to gain the most performance out of the train's tilting abilities, radically steered bogies allowed for an increase in operating speeds by 40% or up to 112 miles an hour without increasing rail wheel forces when compared with conventional bogies, thus reducing wear on both the rail and wheels and seeing the wheel life increased by up to six times its normal lifespan. The increase in speed was complemented by the tilt mechanism that meant passenger comfort was not compromised the tilt mechanism itself being monitored through an accelerometer fitted in the first bogey of the train in the direction of travel that measures, like a pendulum, lateral forces as the train enters a curve. This signal is then processed by the onboard computer of the train that controls a hydraulic ram tilt fitted to each coach, and thus allows for turns into curves of up to 6 degrees to be achieved, the tilting system compensating for up to 75% of the lateral force of a curve, and is only employed at speeds above 44 miles an hour the smoothness of the ABB accelerometer system, meaning that incidents of seasickness experienced by passengers are extremely rare. Upon its launch in September 1990, the X2000 rapidly became synonymous with high-quality high-speed train travel across Sweden, with its incredible mixture of speed and comfort, having seen a pronounced modal shift from cars and domestic airliners to these trains within only a few years of their introduction. The X2000 allowed for a 10 to 15% reduction in journey times on the main route between Stockholm and Gothenburg, thus putting it on competitive terms with SAS's primary commuter run between the two cities. Service patterns by 1995, seeing 14 sets running 14 daily diagrams between 5 a.m. and 11:30 p.m. that operated at a 96% availability, a huge improvement when compared to the more conventional RC class electric locomotives that could only muster an 82-83% to 83% availability. The X2000, against SJ's stringent requirements of 12 failures per 745,000 miles, only suffered a figure of 3.32 failures during the period of September 4, 1990 to September 5, 1995, while of 25,000 departures during the same duration, only 20 failures were recorded due to malfunctions with the tilt mechanism. Maintenance for these sets was undertaken through a computer-controlled split system, with principal maintenance carried out at night, but maintenance also scheduled to be undertaken during turnaround times at terminals, with faults identified in service being radioed forward for attention on train arrival. In terms of onboard amenities, what the X2000 lacked in outright speed against other European high-speed trains, it made up for in sheer comfort. The on-train accommodation of these sets being sold as budget class, equivalent to second class, and X2000 class for business customers. The X2000 class included an at-seat meal and complimentary newspaper, as well as access to fax, phone and photocopying facilities, while budget class ticket holders were catered for by way of an onboard trolley and bistro car, as well as a three-channel sound system available in both classes that could be accessed via seat-mounted headphone jacks. This perfect mixture of speed and comfort saw the X2000 steal back 60% of the market on the Stockholm to Gothenburg run from domestic airlines, while retaining 98% of travellers, and seeing customer satisfaction figures, achieving an average of 4.8 out of a possible 5 stars in terms of service quality. Ultimately, SJ's passenger market share, from its 19% figure before the arrival of the X2000, jumped to 71% by the autumn of 1995, 52% by X2000, and the remainder by regular intercity services. 
such was the success of the X2000 in providing high-speed alternatives without the need for expensive infrastructure upgrades, that it immediately caught the eye of various international customers, the most prominent of which was Amtrak of the United States, whose various experiments in the field of high-speed train travel on their premier northeast corridor between Washington, D.C., New York, and Boston had failed to meet their forecasts. The original Bud Metroliner units of the late 1960s, proposed for 165 mile an hour operation, had been curtailed in length and speed to only 125 miles an hour due to their exceptional power draw and poor reliability, while the following E60 locomotives, based on the design of heavyweight electric freight engines, also had their top speed stunted due to rough riding on poor quality track, which led to a series of derailments. The most successful train at work on the Northeast Corridor was the AEM-7 of 1978, which itself was based on an Americanized version of Sweden's own RC4 electric locomotive, and proved to be a lightweight but sturdy design capable of achieving 125 miles an hour, a vast improvement over its predecessors, but not enough to allow for a competitive edge against domestic air travel, specifically Eastern Airlines shuttle service between Washington National, New York LaGuardia, and Boston Logan Airport. Therefore, in 1992, Amtrak began searching again for possible foreign technology as a means of speeding up the Northeast Corridor, and in October of that year, saw X-2000 set number 2013 shipped to Baltimore, Maryland in order to undergo trials on Metroliner diagrams between Washington Union Station and New York Penn Station in revenue earning service, before undertaking a cross-country tour of the United States. Revenue work for the X-2000 in America commenced from February 1993 and saw a huge publicity, performance improvements, and customer satisfaction levels when compared to the regular AEM-7 hauled Amfleet coaches, the X-2000 working for five months on the Northeast Corridor, before being hauled with diesel locomotives on the non-electrified routes of 48 continental states and some parts of Canada as part of a widespread promotional tour. Eventually, the set returned to the Northeast Corridor for another bout of revenue work from August to September 1993 during which it was also seen alongside its potential rival, an Ice One set as hired from the German railways Deutsche Bundesbahn, after which the X-2000 was shipped back to Sweden. However, though the set had seen a huge positive response from both Amtrak and passengers, it was ultimately not taken up for American production, as in order to make the train compatible with stringent US safety regulations, the X-2000 would require heavy modifications that ABB were unwilling to administer thus leading, eventually, to the contract for Amtrak's new high-speed train going to Alstom, who developed the Acceler Express of 2000 that was based on the underpinnings of the TGV Rezo sets of France. In 1995, the X2000 was once again trialled for export service, this time in New South Wales, Australia, when CountryLink, the recently established operator of intercity services across the state, sought new traction to replace its British HST-based XPT sets and explored diesel multiple units on long-distance trains out of Sydney. The trials in Australia employed the non-powered trailers and cab car of an X2000 set between April and June 1995 on some Sydney to Canberra services that were propelled by a modified XPT power car, though sadly these demonstration runs never saw an order for the type in New South Wales. However, more successful was the trial of a specially built X2000 unit for the Guangshen Railway Company in China in 1998 for service between Guangzhou and Kowloon across the water from Hong Kong Island. This set, numbered 2088, operating until August 2007 on the route, before proposals were made to trial the set in the Sichuan province of the Chengdu Railway Bureau. Sadly, following the devastating Sichuan earthquake of May 12, 2008, the need to repair the largely destroyed railway network together with the cost of maintaining this bespoke set, saw it return to the Guangshen Railway Company in late December 2008, where it was placed into storage until being bought by SJ and repatriated to Sweden in 2012, the cab car being put on display at the Swedish Railway Museum, while the power car and five intermediate trailers were repaired and re-entered service with SJ in 2020. Outside of the train's unfortunate inability to woo the export market, the X2000 has lent itself briefly to international service across Scandinavia, specifically the short-lived Lynx train that operated between Stockholm and Oslo in Norway and from Oslo to Copenhagen via Gothenburg, the sets involved receiving a stylish blue, orange and yellow livery. 
Unfortunately, due to the Lynx service being unable to compete with the speed of low-cost airlines, as well as the extremely winding nature of Norway's railway system, the joint venture was axed after only four years of operation in 2004. Today, the X2000 remains the backbone of Sweden's main intercity corridors between Stockholm, Gothenburg and Malmö, operating with comfort, efficiency and reliability that exceeds many of its European contemporaries, even if it is unable to match the outright speed of trains like the TGV, the ICE, the Ave, and the Italian Pendolino. Thus, these trains represent one of the finest examples of making the best of a bad situation in terms of poor infrastructure and topographic obstacles, and thereby have created a machine that shows perfectly how tilting technology can provide a simple but effective means of overcoming such problems.